This channel is for educational purposes only. Please do your own due diligence before making any investment decisions. Hi, this is Joe Rabel with Invest Like a Pro, and I'm going to give you a stock market update as of Thursday's close for Friday morning. I'm going to go through all the market conditions and the individual time frames for both trend and momentum. I uh, want to talk about what the projections are of how far this market can go and also look to see just how strong the momentum characteristics are. Um, when we're done with that, we're going to take a quick peek at a trade setup that took place yesterday. I think it's good to continue to be repetitive and show you something. This is a kind of a unique pattern that doesn't happen all that often and it's worth talking about. All right, let's go ahead and get going with the uh, market update. So if you'd like to learn more about the approach, uh, you can find my research and my uh, trading school at uh, rabelstockresearch.com forward slash services. Uh, the book is at uh, rabelstockresearch.com forward slash book. Now, the book and the courses are probably going to, the price of them are probably going to be changing, just so you're aware, because I am about to complete another uh, course that's going into the bundle. Uh, so if you have an interest in it, I would suggest uh, moving forward uh, sooner rather than later. And I'm, I'm just telling you, the prices are going to go up. So uh, just kind of want to make you aware of that so you're not caught off guard. All right, let's go ahead and move on to the market. Okay, let's start out with the market conditions sheet here. Um, just I know there's some people that like to update theirs and then compare it. So, uh, you know, we've got the sentiment jumping around. It would last, so it went from 37 down to 29 last week, and now it's back up to 36. So the, what's taking place is the bulls are kind of moving depending on what's taking place. If the market's making a move up, they're getting bullish. If it's going down, they're getting bearish. They're kind of um, just uh, chasing it a little bit right now. But based on where it's situated now, anything between the 35% to 45% range is considered um, you know, more in the negative zone. It's a little bit more bearish, uh, meaning there's too many bulls. And so um, I, I talk about this probably every other week. So I get a lot of questions for some reason. I, I, I try and explain what I'm using for the sentiment. I use the Investor's Intelligence Sentiment Numbers. It's, it's their survey of uh, investment managers uh, and um, letter writers, okay? And they basically read through all of the letters that are written and, you know, people survey and uh, and figure out whether they're bullish, bearish, or looking for a correction. And they post it on here, all right? I've been using it for over 30 years. Those guys at uh, Investors Intelligence were clients of mine. Um, I was actually a part of the survey way back, uh, probably 20, 20 years ago, 25 years ago at one point. Um, but uh, the point I'm making here is that sentiment can be anything you want to use. If you got some approach that you'd rather use over this, that's fine. I'm just telling you, I have a lot of history with this. And so I use the investor's intelligence sentiment survey. The number of bulls minus the number of bears is what I'm showing you here. All right. This was last week and this is the current week. All right. Hopefully that clears up some things for people that have been watching um, and I know there's new people watching each week, so uh, just thought I'd explain that. Um, and uh, anyway, let's go ahead and move on to the overbought, oversold. So um, I use the RSI 5 on the weekly to get a feel for uh, whether we're um, overbought or oversold or neutral right now. And it's up around 82, 83 uh, and moving up. And if you notice what happened, we made a peak back right near the end of the year, we pulled back and then we made another move to the upside. And um, we're actually making a lower peak while price is making a considerably higher peak. So not only are we overbought, but we're forming a little bit of a divergence. Now, it's not officially in a divergence until we get some kind of a reversal in price to the downside. And this turns back down. We had the same thing take place here back um, in the July, you know, July through I think that was around August, September, where it pushed higher like this. And this made a lower peak. And then we went through some kind of a correction. So we need to be on the lookout for this based on how um, overbought it has gotten um, and the fact that we're forming some divergence here. Now, um, I'm going to run through these just so you can see these really quick. The only change that I made in this is the uh, daily went from uh, the momentum went from neutral to no, actually, 
the only thing that went that changed this week is I had the momentum here and it went to the middle. I, I moved it to officially into the positive category as opposed to being over here. And um, the trends are positive. The momentums are positive and the volatility I'm going to show you in a second are both positive again. Um, <clears throat> the weekly volatility was neutral and it turned positive. All right, let's go ahead and get through these charts now. Um, look at the weekly average true range and the blue line is an 18 MA of that average true range line, that red line. We're hitting another new low uh, in the average true range for the weekly and the, we've got a declining line there. This is very bullish. Um, this is a very bullish uh, scenario based on the volatility. There's not a lot of volatility. The size of these bars are not big. We wouldn't be, we wouldn't be thinking that there's been a lot of distribution taking place based on what's taking place here. Now, that's on a longer term time frame. Now, let's look at what's taking place on the daily. It was trying to turn. It's tried to turn a couple times in here, but not enough to turn the blue line, which is the more important line, to the upside. All right. So these are kind of just warning flares off the bow that we're, we're getting a little bit of a heightened uh, increase in volatility. Now, remember, this is a daily chart. There's a lot more movement on a daily chart than there is on a weekly. So we get these little moves. But look at what's happened. It's dropped back down below the moving average. We're back to positive. Now, um, in that, in basically, you can see it in the price action. The size of the bars have not been that big. The last four or five bars have been smaller. Now, I do want to point out, I like this chart with the different 18 MAs. The blue, the, uh, this, this line is the, um, so I'm on a daily chart, right? And I've got an 18 um, day right here. I've got an 18 week right here. I've got an 18 month right here. And then down off the chart, which is actually showing up on the weekly, is um, the, uh, eight, the uh, quarterly line. So this is the weekly. This is the monthly. And you can really see it on the weekly. You see how we've gotten stretched away from the weekly line? And the weekly line has some distance between uh, it itself and the 18 month. And we've got a little bit of distance between the eight and the 18 month and the quarterly line, right? So I mean, these are just kind of things we want to be aware of getting stretched away from all of these lines. We know that we've got a risk of a pullback, but we want to look at the market conditions to see if it's something that we should be really worried about. And um, I'm going to get into where I think this can go. And based on the way this is acting and these market conditions are in place, um, where we go from here. So let's go ahead and move into the time frames. Um, now, the weekly chart thing I want to show here is that so we had a bull pinch play on the monthly and I usually when I when I talk about this in my course I'm saying like two to four bars so if it happens on a daily chart I'm thinking two to four days if it's happening on a monthly chart I'm thinking two to four months if we have a really good setup on the ADX then I'm thinking it could be the start of a major move but I'd, I'd be leaning towards the way this is set up as being more like a two to four bar move is, is what I'd be thinking before we go through some kind of a correction or something like that. Now, um, I don't have the S&P up, but what I want to point out is the S&P is getting very close to the 5,000 mark. All right. That's a big round number, big round number. We got to keep an eye out for the big round numbers. And when we get up to that, especially if we're stretched to the upside, if we've made a decent move to get to that level, then we should be thinking that's going to act as a barrier. Uh, the fact that we've broken to a new high and we've got pretty good momentum conditions in place, which I'll show in a second on the smaller time frames, I think the likelihood is, is that we, we are going to work our way up towards that uh, 5,000 mark maybe even exceeded a little bit, but you know, we, we want to be uh, watching for that. And what I've been saying all along is you got to be careful about getting too bearish. All right. I mean, we, we had some signs of contraction showing up, uh, but when the ADX is this strong on the daily chart, we got to be really careful. And we had a little divergence show up on the, on the MACD off of the high, right? And then, uh, but we also had reverse divergence show up. But look at what happened. So we had reverse divergence here. So let's just look at this. Reverse divergence here, comparing these two levels. But then what happened is we made another move up and then pulled back and tried to break the 18. And this 18 was trying to roll over, but it couldn't because it immediately, price went right back up to a new high. 
But look at what happened. I'm going to zero in on this for a second. So this actually made a higher low while this made another lower low. So we had two layers of reverse divergence in place. And, and then, you know, essentially breaking out to a new high, we have to respect that. What I mentioned last week was if DI can get back up through, if we had a contraction in place. We got to watch every single lower high, lower high, lower high. And then if we take out that lower high, like if, if green takes that up, then it's a resumption of the trend. And that's essentially what's taking place. And now we're moving higher. I think the 5,000 mark is where we should be on the lookout for. The reason why I'm not overly concerned right this second is because on an hourly chart, the last reading to the upside that we got was over 50. That's a very strong ADX reading. So it doesn't mean we can't consolidate, but the odds are we'll have another move that will at least test this high and, and probably exceed this high at some point down the road. Now, if that peak, if that move, let's say we consolidate and go up, if that happens and we don't get this to move higher, if this makes a significantly lower high, maybe below 25, 30, something like that, that's where we've got to start getting worried about a correction taking place on uh, the daily chart. But you know, that might not, I mean, we'll have to see. I mean, it's possible we could, that could happen at any point. And the reason why it could happen at any point is because we're pretty far away from the 18 week. I mean, we, we're just legitimately away from the 18 week. So um, we have to be careful. You can't just dive into everything. Don't chase stocks that look like this. Like don't go just buying something that's up 10 weeks in a row because you think everything's going to keep going up. I don't think that's a good strategy based on the risk reward because 5,000 is not that far away. That's a, that's a couple good days away for the S&P and all of a sudden we're hitting what could be a potential barrier. So just kind of keep that in mind. And also just the fact that the RSI 5 on the uh, weekly chart is up at 82 with a little divergence forming. All right. Now, well, let me just do this. I'm going to um, switch this really quickly. And I want to show you what happened last week. I'm sorry, two days ago. All right. Um, I noticed this as this was playing out. So look at how. So this was on Wednesday. All right. Now, the market gapped up. It pulled back, made a new high, consolidated, and then tried to push to a new high. Now, if we look at what took place, this is on a five minute chart. All right. You see how we got a little tiny little range bar as we broke out? And, and listen, I know I'm doing this on a five-minute chart, but this could happen on a weekly chart. This could be a weekly and this could be a daily. So this is why I'm going through this. If, if you get a breakout bar and the following bar is a tiny little range bar, that is not the kind of follow-through you should be looking for. Now, there's one other thing that showed up here right at the same time. So you get this breakout bar, we're hitting a new high for the day, and then we get a doji, a indecision bar, a lack of follow through taking place, and MACD can't get above the signal line. It's a significant, significant divergent pattern, which was kind of building up because of the way this was consolidating. It, it stayed below the whole time, okay? Um, now, we've had some contraction here, but I would have been focusing in on this, which is what I was looking at here, is the failure here and the, <laughs> the fact that um, MACD couldn't get above the signal line. So obviously, what I would do is go and see what's going on on the smaller time frame, right? When that's taking place, look at the way this played out on the one minute chart. So this is a really cool pattern that you want to be on the lookout for. I talk about this in my course uh, by the way, the ADX um, section is the largest section in my course. I go through so much detail uh, on that. And uh, I really think it takes a long time to get a, a strong feel of how to see this in real time. And so that's why I recommend people who get, who get the course to watch it over and over and over again. Um, but look at the way this played out. So we had confirmation of the up move here. And then we go through this consolidation and we make another new high here and the we get divergence all right so we get a divergence and all but the only thing that happens is we just kind of pull back and then we go to another new high and you see how the adx actually confirmed this move by crossing above 25 so once you have divergence in place so you got divergence here but we don't get price to actually break down and it goes up one more time and we get this to cross over. This is called a climax pattern. This is an ADX climax top. All right. We have divergence and then we get people thinking 
that a new move is starting, but it's really kind of one last gasp up to the uh, to the upside. And then look at the size of the bars. Look at the size of the volume. Instant reversal. Really strong move to the downside that had significant follow through. I mean, this is a one minute chart. Now we're not, we're not talking. I mean, the next day it was back up. But so, but in terms of like a one minute trade, this is pretty phenomenal. The downside move that took place basically for the balance of the day. All right. Good thing to be on the lookout for is this climax pattern. It doesn't happen all that often, but you got to be really careful because I think a lot of people get fooled into believing this is the start of a new move when in reality, it's kind of like a last gasp up move. All right. That's the update for the week. Uh, let me know if you have any questions.